Welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to do the last or start the last section of our 2.3 relative position of lines and planes by doing 2.3.3 the relative position of two planes. In previous videos we did two lines and a line and a plane and this is going to be the last section two planes. So there are three possibilities for the, it's hard to fit them all on the screen here, three possibilities for the relative position of two planes. They can be parallel distinct or just parallel. They can be parallel coincident so that they actually occupy exactly the same points in space, in which case we'll call them just coincident. Uh, and they can be intersecting at a line. So that is something that might be new to you, uh, two objects that intersect at something other than a point. So planes in three-dimensional space, and they intersect, they will intersect at a line. That's if they're not coincident. Uh, in which case, we will call them just intersecting. And you can sort of see a diagram here that if planes cut each other, they will cut each other at a full line. So we're going to use vectors again to distinguish between these three situations. And the first thing that we're going to do is examine the normal vectors for the plane. So if we look at whether the normal vectors n1 and n2 are parallel or not, well immediately that distinguishes one of these three cases. So if we look at normal vectors, the normal vector n1 uh, is parallel to n2 in the case that places are planes are parallel. n1 is parallel to n2 again in the case that the planes are coincident. It is here n1 is not parallel to n2. So in the case that the lines, that the planes are intersecting at a line, the normal vectors are non-parallel and that lets us distinguish immediately from the given equations that geometry. So to distinguish between the parallel and the coincident situations, we need to go a little bit further and actually just looking at the equations of the planes, right? So we know the plane equation in general form ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. Looking at that, inspecting that equation can give us the information that we need. So if we uh, take, for example, the coincident case, then the plane equations, the equations of the two planes, the plane equations will be multiples. The plane equations are multiples of each other. And let me give you an example to show you what I mean by that. So for example, let's imagine that our plane N1 was x plus y plus z minus 1 equals 0. If we had a coincident plane, its equation would have to be a full multiple of this. So imagine that I multiplied everything here, let's say, by 2. So 2x plus 2y plus 2z minus 2 equals 0. So that would be the uh, an example of the plane equations being fully multiples of each other and those two planes would be coincident. In the first case that we have listed on the page here, parallel, well the plane equations, plane equations are not, aren't multiples. And let's see what that would have to look like. So let's say that we have our same x plus y plus z minus 1 equals 0 for our first plane. The normal vectors are still parallel. 
the normal vectors are still parallel, which means that the coefficients of the x, y, and z would still need to be full multiples. Right? So we'd still have something like 2x plus 2y plus 2z, but the entire equation could not be the same multiple. So I might have something like minus 3 equals 0. So the plane equations are not full multiples, but the normal vectors are. So we might express that another way here. We might say n1 is a multiple of n2, but d1 is not k times d2. And what am I talking about d1 and d2? I'm talking about the d's in the plane equation. So d1 and d2, they're not the same multiple as the rest of the equation, which uh, is comprised of the normal vector components. And so what would I say down here? I would say that n1 is k times n2 and, and also d1 must be the same k times d2 so that the multiple is the same for every part of that equation. If we wanted to look at intersections, well, it's a little harder to distinguish these cases by intersection. One of them is obvious. This is an empty intersection. Right? There's obviously no points. There are no points that these planes share in common. The coincident and the intersecting at a line case, they each share infinitely many points. Right Here there's infinitely many, many points in the intersection. And the same thing with lines, with the uh, intersecting at a line, right? There's infinitely many points, many points in the intersection. There's infinitely many points on a line. So a simple number of points in the intersection won't be enough to distinguish those. We'd have to look at the dimension, which is a little bit more, uh, it's not tricky exactly, but you have to know what you're doing to look at the dimension of the intersection. Obviously, this is a two-dimensional intersection, whereas this one is only a one-dimensional intersection. So if one is a little careful in how one solves for the intersection of these objects, one can use that information as well to distinguish uh, between the three cases, but we are going to rely mainly on our vector methods.